Oh, you know I had to play it. It's my first podcast of the year, you know, so I had to. <laughs> I'm back. Of course. Of yeah. course. It only makes Yo. sense. And now, uh, what's going on, y'all? What's up, y'all? What's up? What's up? Welcome back to another episode of the Melanin Money Show. So y'all know I'm really hyped right now. It's my first episode of the year. I bet it was down bad a little bit, but they couldn't keep a real G down. Uh, so we're back, man. So Carter, Jacqueline, how y'all doing? And of course, we got our special guest, Kamoy, the Airbnb guru. Super excited to have you, man. How's everybody feeling today? Um, I'm feeling Absolutely good, y'all. Incredible. I'm feeling good. Go ahead. I'm incredible, man. You know, I'm honored to be on uh, the Melanin, you know, Money Podcast. I mean, there's no money like Melanin Money, so let's get it. Hey. Gotta hey we got to use that. We got to use you, that. You like Melanin Money. Hey, you said something there. And as we all know, you know, happy Black History Month. You know, it is the Melanin Money Month. So can I get a cash tag for that, George? Absolutely. You already know the vibes. You know? <laughs> you know the vibes. I need all of that. I need all of that. Just like I need all of these gems from Kimoy, okay? I need to know everything about what got you to being the airbnb king what, what's your title here um I, I would like to call myself you know i guess an airbnb and short-term rental specialist and coach i love that i love that okay. i thought he was gonna go with prince or something like that i was like man, you got mad <laughs> prince vibes <laughs> <laughs> no nah, man you know one of the things we we really you know want to start doing on the melon and money show is like on Instagram, you just see these sound bites of success, right? It's like people traveling all over the world. They got the crazy cars now. They're killing it. They're crushing it. And, and there can kind of be a disconnect on the journey or like the process of like how they got there, right? And so what we love to spend a little bit of time doing is just really getting to understand like a little bit about your backstory, right? Like, you know, how'd you get here? Was you, were you was Airbnb and short-term rental always the goal? Did you have other hustles or businesses along the way? Just like, you know, give us the, the gems that people can't really see, you know, in these sound bites on, on Instagram. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Um, well, I guess I can kind of share with you guys like how I even got birthed into this whole entrepreneurship thing, right? Um, I'll go back to as far as 2013 because that's when I was working my last job. Um, I was a caseworker for Department of Social Services. Mm. And interestingly enough, I went to college for a degree in biology, right? And after Me I graduated, too. you know, <laughs> yeah. are, are you are you doing anything in biology? Not technically, no. Nah. You know, the, only remember, the only thing I remember from biology, I don't know why it stuck in my head, is the chemical formula for glucose. C six H two O six. I don't know why it won't leave my brain. But I was like H two O was all I got, bro, and I'm out. I was like, don't say mitosis. I don't want to talk about that. The sad thing is, I don't even remember that. Um, <laughs> to be honest, like me, me, me personally, I, I, I did not take school serious, man. I was just like, I, I went to school to make my parents happy, just because I thought it was gonna be like, I don't know, the thing to at least get me to be successful and make money. Yeah, um, but school never really like it. I, I was never excited about it. I was I did the least amount to to just pass. That was I was that guy, <laughs> right? Just enough. Um, just enough, man. Just enough to get the degree, <laughs> and and then after I graduated, couldn't find a job in my field. Maybe because I did just enough. Maybe that was why. But never found a job in my field. <laughs> and the the next best job where you need a degree was social services as a caseworker. And the thing is, if you know anything about like the realm of social work, the pay sucks though. Like social workers are some of the most undervalued, I mean, just people in the world, but yet they provide so much value in the no, community. No, you they know? are, they are. So I think when you were telling your story, you were saying you were making like $28,000 a year. Yep. yep. What? Just At shy, the college? Just, yes, yes, sir. Just shy of 30K, man. Cause I remember specifically, cause it was a state government job. And you know, like government jobs, they have like these like different, you know, it's, it's caseworker one. It's like these little things, increments. Um, so it was literally just shy of 30,000. But believe it or not, at that point in my life, I was actually excited. And the reason why I was excited was because I went through some time of not having a job. Mm. <laughs> and I didn't really know better, right? Like for me, like I, I just had this degree. I got all this student loan debt about to start coming in. I got bills. And it's like, yo, I'm in the real world. And I have no job. Like a lot of my friends, they're getting jobs. Like, and I'm just like scrambling trying to figure this whole thing out. So when I got that social work job, mind you, like it was a frat brother that put me onto that job. It was like a hookup. Um, yeah. But when I hookup got that- 28K. 28K. Right. Hey, look, you'll take right. it though. <laughs> right, exactly. 
And and when I got it, I was excited, man, because it was like, you know, 30K was better than zero. And, you know, it, it made me feel like, okay, at least I have a job, you know, I'm, but while I'm doing that, I'm trying to still figure out maybe I should go to grad school. And I started going to grad school, but I got like kicked out after like the first year um, because I didn't maintain the grades again. Just yeah. enough, just and, and grad school that just enough bar is a little bit higher than undergrad. You know what I'm saying? And 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 do you, do you know just enough doesn't really work that well in grad school? That's that's what I found out. <laughs> There's actually yeah. no requirements. That's a fact. Um, so that's what happened. And after being in social in case you know as social services for a couple of years, you know I just kind of got to a breaking point, right? Because I just remember kind of driving to work one day. And mind you, if, you know, a lot of times social services is in a very low income area. So I was doing it in Baltimore City and it was just like, I'm driving by like, you know, people leaned over, we call it the Baltimore lean. Um, you know, <laughs> just, they're, they're heavily just, you know, on drugs and things of that nature. And then the lobby of the social services would just be very depressing, you know, very low vibration. And it's like a lot of my coworkers, they just kind of don't have a lot of aspirations and, it's just, it was just a very just unfulfilling environment to be in. Um, yeah. And I just knew that I wanted to change, man. And then at the time, I, my frat brother, I was a, we were roommates. He had recently quit his job and he was reading all these different personal development books. And I, it was like him moving like that was an inspiration to me because it was just like, man, you just quit your job. Like you, he was making $50,000. So to He's me, like, they, bro, you he, crazy. <laughs> he was making 50000 but he quit his job to go after this whole entrepreneurship thing, right? I think he like was trying to create his own, like, like just like contracting company or whatever. Um, but it was inspiring to me. And then he started recommending these books to me. Mind you, I hated reading because I was doing a bare minimum in school. But like, you want to give him my like, free time for this? Like, yeah, like, but he started telling about these books and he started telling about how much it was making a difference for him. And it was giving him this right mindset. And I was like, let me try out these books, right? So he recommended this one book called Success Principles by Jack Canfield. And that book changed my life because that book was like the first time that I actually read something and I got excited. And that book kind of showed me like a glimpse of like what would be, what, what's possible if you actually are intentional about designing your life and living life on your terms. Like whatever reason, I think it was because of where I was at and like everything that Jack Canfield was writing in that book, I felt like it was like for me. Would you recommend oh, that book to people now? Wait, wait, what's the book? Success? Success Principles, right? Success, Success Principles, yeah, by Jack Campbell. He, he, he's also the co-author of like, Chicken Noodle Soup for the Soul. That I think it's yeah, I knew, the, I knew the name sounded familiar. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think Jack feels under, underrated, man. But um, I, would definitely, I would definitely recommend that book. But the funny thing is about books, it's like, I feel like you got to be in a certain place in your life for books to connect with you, too. Uh, Cause two people can read the same book, but like, you know, one person, they're just not there. It's like just words on paper. Um, but because I was looking for change, it was like everything that he was saying, I was, I was, it was, it was for me, but also I was literally executing on everything that he said. He said, listen, he's like, you know, get a journal, write down your goals, be very intentional, set specific dates. He was like, look, your current circumstance doesn't dictate your future circumstance. He started talking about all these things that were like new to me. It was so refreshing started sharing stories about regular people that came from nothing, people that were poor, that became multimillionaires and millionaires. I'm like, damn, it, it actually gave me a lot of hope. That's, um, yeah. No, I, I love that you shared that. And I want to like take a step back really quickly. Um, mm -hmm. Since we were talking about school and being a student, I want to take a moment to read one of the five-star reviews we got on our podcast. So uh, C, no, KCDFZ, this is the name. Shout out to you, whoever you are. Um, but the title is Student CPA. So my name is Kingsley Ifedi. Ifedi, y'all don't judge me. <laughs> Kingsley, I'm a student becoming a CPA. This podcast gives me a lot of dope insight into the world of financial freedom. Thank you for everything. Kingsley, we appreciate you leaving us a review. And we have something special for you if you send an email to podcast at melaninmoney.com. Yeah. But Kingsley, with that you, bro what's that i'll say shout out kingsley appreciate the review bro mm -hmm. yeah we're here to help so i hope that kamoy's story is inspiring to you kamoy can you tell me and our listeners more about like what was that inflection point for you where you decided like okay enough is enough like i see my friend doing this but what was the real point where you're like okay enough is enough for me 
I need to read this book and try to find more information? Yeah, I mean, I just became very dissatisfied. I got dissatisfied with my income being check to check. Um, I got dissatisfied with, I mean, working in that environment. I feel like, I feel like everybody had like left their dreams, like <laughs> on the, like everybody was just empty. Like people yeah. were physically there, but they were like mentally not, you know, like it, it just, and I, just having this, just a small conversations around the office. It was just like, it, it just seemed like people just like had hit just a ceiling, you mm -hmm. know? And, but then I, but then I had, I had a couple of people in my life that were really successful and that were millionaires. And I'm like, I would think about it, like, yo, what's the difference maker? Like, why is it that some people live a certain life and why do a lot of people don't? And it's like, the more I got, more, the more I became dissatisfied, the more I started like dissecting that, mm. you know? And then like yes, reading yes, the book yes. definitely started mm -hmm. opening up my, my, my eyes more to that as well. Like I started seeing the separation on how, person can be successful or they can literally just settle like i start i start seeing the 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 common denominators that determine that right right now that's that's it's so important to have that level of awareness right and then have self-awareness around like what you want right and what you yeah. don't have so you can close that gap so yeah. i guess my question to you is when you think about going from just shy of 30,000 to, you know, immersing yourself in personal development and, and, and doing everything you can to start moving in the right direction. How do you get to a place where you don't get complacent, right? Because when the benchmark is 30K, and let's say you you could 100, I mean, you could have 100% increase in your income and be making 60, right? So like, how do you on your journey, because you're reaching some pretty significant milestones. I know you're in the mastermind with Carter and Jacqueline. So like, y'all are killing it. Y'all are crushing it. Y'all doing a lot of great things. So as someone who is continuing to elevate, how do you like? How do you develop the mindset that says, you know what? No matter the fact that I'm I'm okay financially, I'm still going to achieve for greatness at the highest level. Like, how do you have that type of mindset that keeps striving for more? Get around people that are at a high level. Mm. You know, it's like a lot of times when people reach a, a higher level, right, a much higher level than they previously were. A lot of times, people get complacent because you know, they're around people that are that are at their level or below. So it's like everybody's mm -hmm. congratulating them. Everybody's kind of like tooting their horn, bigging them up. So what happens is you start kind of like, you start feeding into it, right? Like you start feeding into it, your ego gets big. Um, but in reality, it, it, you only feel like that because you're only with people at your level or below. But if you get around other people that are doing so much more than you, it's like, it's, even though you've done a lot, you're not going to feel like you did much because it's like... <laughs> you see what they're doing you're like wow like what well, I, I haven't done enough so right. that's what i do i'm always surround myself with people that are much greater than me at a higher level yeah, not just only, financially but just thinking and just everything that makes a ton of sense i guess my only follow-up to that though is in, in this age of you know social media and highlight reels and things of that nature how do you also not like how do you still stay focused on what your goals are and not feel like you're comparing yourself to someone else relative to where they are, right? You know, the thing they always yeah. say, don't compare your chapter one to someone's chapter 10. So uh, what's the fine line between like the inspiration and being inspired and being in those rooms versus yeah. not being intimidated. And then that yeah. now like making you feel like you're not enough. If that mm. means. Hey, yeah, look, that's, that, that's, that's tough. That, yeah, that's, that's a really good question. Honestly, I think it's gratitude, you know? So, so like for me, man, like I'm, I'm very competitive. You know, like I, whenever I see somebody winning big, especially maybe at a higher level than me, I feed off that. Like it pushes me, right? Um, but, it, but, but at the same time, it's like, yo, no, I'm, 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 no matter what, I'm grateful for where I'm at. I'm grateful for what I've accomplished, but I'm not like settled, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I, I pre look, I, I thank God every single day for everything that I have in my life currently, everything, every single day. But I understand that I'm only at a fraction of what, I, what I'm gonna accomplish, right? Like I, I haven't even scratched the surface. So it's like, I, I feel like it's truly gratitude. Like once yeah. you practice gratitude, you'll always be fulfilled and you'll always be appreciative of where you are. But you gotta be, I think you should, you should always remain hungry so you're not complacent. For sure. And, and I think it's just going over your story, man, just being in the right rooms is so important, right? Like if you weren't in the room with that roommate that wanted more, right? Like, would you have even like thought about quitting the job with person? Like, when would personal development have even became a thing for you? It could have yeah. never happened. It could have happened a few years down the line. Down the line. So I just want to remind all our listeners and, and repeat this drum to the T, like getting in that right room, getting in the room is so important. And not just that room with your roommate, but like, 
like at the mastermind room, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure your level of success has changed since we joined that same mastermind because you're around people that are doing so many things and just, you know, is, once your mind is expanded, it can't be recontracted. So um, I think that's so important, man. So so keep let's keep going with the story if you don't mind, man. So you get to this point where like, when do you quit your job? How does that happen? How did quitting your job happen? Do people think you were crazy? Like, give us that yeah. story of like the journey into Airbnb from quitting the job. Yeah, so um, I want to say I read that book around 2022. So it kind of gave me, it started sparking some thoughts in my head about like starting businesses, getting outside my comfort zone. Wait, wait, um, wait. Wait, wait. Wait. Two thousand. You said 2020. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, 2012. Okay. Um, yeah, 2012. And um, even to the point of like, I was like, I was not comfortable with public speaking, but even like to the point of like becoming more confident in, in speaking, like Jack Campbell talked about like going to Toastmasters. So I just became very intentional about like improving every area of my life, right? And get out of my comfort zone. Um, and then something he talked about was, was um, creating masterminds, right? And he was talking about like finding like-minded people and talk about different ideas. So like thing for me is I wanted to quit my job. So what I did was I kind of got on the horn. I started, you know, calling a few of my friends and I was just like, yo, let's, let's kind of meet up on a weekly basis to talk about, because these are, I, these are friends that we've had conversations about being entrepreneurs and eventually quitting our jobs, kind of sharing our dissatisfaction. Right. So I said, yo, let's meet up. Let's talk, you know, like, let's actually make something of it. So I want to say it was about like five or six of us. We would meet up on a weekly basis and we would talk about different ideas. And all types of businesses, bro. Like, we, I think somebody brought up like a hookah, like starting a hookah shop, like that was on the table. Maybe starting like, you know, like a club or like um, yeah. all different types of ideas. But then one friend brought up this concept called wholesaling real estate. Um, and me personally, at the time, I never heard of wholesaling real estate, but my, my boy was like, listen, you know, you can do this, you can make money, you don't have to have money. And I'm like, for real? So I literally, after that meeting, I went back to the crib and I like binge watched like all these different videos. I found all these eBooks and I was just like soaking all the information. As a matter of fact, I would literally wake up like five o'clock every morning just to like listen to like wholesale and real estate content. And um, about a couple weeks later, I called those same friends. I said, listen, we're going to start a wholesale and real estate company. And that's what we did. So like, I went out and ended up going to like the, the you know, secretary of state, starting an LLC. And, you know, we was figuring out how to like market for deals and all that stuff. And like, you know, it's funny thing is, I think it was like, we started with like five of us, but then like, <laughs> by the time I did my first deal, everybody had quit, right? But I'm gonna get into that. <laughs> everybody, I'm gonna get into that. But so pretty much I had officially launched that wholesaling business like around, um, around May. It was like April or May. And I had this crazy idea. And also I was doing other odd jobs, but like, I was like, I was like selling like um, Rosetta Stones and these Insanity and P90Xs. I told you about hustling, bro, like hustling. Hey, like, what's I, had, about? I made like, I made like 25K in like three months selling Insanity and Rosetta Stones. Crazy, right? Like I yeah. just outside of work. Um, and um, and then I want to say in like June, I've had this, this crazy idea of quitting my job August of August of 2013 okay and I was like I don't care what happens at that time I'd even do a deal yet so I started a wholesaling company in um like April May-ish I said in June I was going to quit my job so I gave the quit notice to my to my supervisor I said listen August August 2nd is my last day so between then into August, I was just grinding, bro. Grinding, 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 learning, 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 reading more. Because again, that one book got me excited. So I started reading hella books, right? Like I got fired up. I was like, if this one book can get me this excited, I, I was reading all these different books and I was just feeding my mindset, finding different ways to figure out this wholesale and real estate thing. And then um, August 2nd comes and I still didn't do a deal. I had about $10,000 saved up and I was clearing up my box. And it's like people were coming up to me, kind of telling me like farewells and all that. And I was kind of nervous because I was like, yo, I didn't make any money yet, but I'm here quitting. But then one lady came to my desk, kind of wishing me farewell. And she says something that resonated with me forever. And she was like, you know, Mr. Martin, I'm proud of you because, you know, you're going to step out here and you're kind of going to go after your dreams and your goals. And me personally, I've been thinking about leaving this place for years. I didn't think I'd, I'd be here this long. I was, I'm literally here 10 years longer in which I plan on being here. And, wow. um, and I, she's like, I'm proud of you. And mind you, like, as much as I was nervous, that conversation gave me like all the fuel I needed and all the confidence I needed to know that I was making the decision. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know what was going to happen once I left out those doors. But what mm. I did know was I was taking ownership of what I want to do and how I want to live my life. And um, I was willing to do whatever it took. And I think yes. the, the big part of that is that you found out it's actually more risky to stay than it is to leave because she just told you that she just gave 10 more years to a job that she didn't plan on. So yeah. I want everybody to take that nugget away. Ask the question, what's the risk if you stay? Everybody thinks like, what's the risk if you leave? Like, what's the risk if you stay? Um, it could yeah. be like the rest of your life, you know? Yeah. Oh. I, look, I, I, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, I think that's huge, but I think that also speaks to like, and I know this might be a little touchy feely for a room full of guys, but it speaks to that self-love component and why it's so important to be disciplined and love yourself. Because when you make that promise to yourself, like Kimo, you made a promise to yourself, like maybe it was indirectly, but you made a promise to yourself of like, I'm leaving this job and I'm going to go pursue what I think is going to be a happier maybe more fruitful life right like you made a promise yeah. to yourself to do that and that's how you walked out the door right so i've lived a life where like i physically like intentionally make promises to myself of like i'm not going to do that again like you know i my my article that went viral was um i promised myself i would never be broke again so like with that woman sharing that with you i think that's really indicative of like you're just self-love, right? Like you love yourself so much that you were like, no, I want, I want better for myself. I'm not going to sit at a job for 10 years that I don't want to be at. So I love that part of your story. Yeah. And, and the way I think about that is like, people don't realize like how much success is tied to self-confidence and, but how, but how self-confidence comes about, right? Yep. Self-confidence comes about when you say you're going to do something and then you actually do it. Because what happens is it it, your, it tells your brain like, oh, like I'm about this life, right? And, and because at the end of the day, no one likes the feeling of failure, right? So if you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, it now sends a subconscious like energy to say, hey, you know what? Well, let me just not say I'm going to do so. Let me just not commit because if I commit, I'm going to fail and I don't like how that feels. But the yeah. more you say yes to you and the more you actually go through with it, you're going to get excited. It's going to, it's going to remind you that, yes, I am this person. It's going to breed confidence and that confidence is going to manifest more success. And so to Jacqueline's point, making those promises, like whatever it is that you're trying to achieve in life, you got to have a, you got to have a contract. I think I call it like being in contract with yourself, right? Yeah. You'll sign a contract and read the terms and conditions for your iPhone. You'll sign a contract and for your lease, you'll sign a contract for all this stuff, but you don't have a contract with yourself, right? Like what is the con? like, what are your non-negotiables? What is your life operating system? What are your, what is your terms and agreement? Like, you know, we let people walk into your life and just like, you know, treat you any kind of way, or you don't have certain standards. Like, I think it's so important. I don't want to go off on a tangent here, but it's so important to like harp on that because when you make those decisions, those are the breadcrumbs for building self-confidence. That's going to be the platform to create your success. And I think that was probably a, a really big catalyst because you could have turned around. You could have probably got your job back. Like, you know, man, I ain't, make, I ain't get a deal yet. Like, Right. Let me just, let me stay here a couple more weeks until I get a deal. But you say, you know what? I said I'm gone and I'm gone. So I love That's that. A fact, man. That's a fact. Oh. And listen, just, just a disclaimer. I, I, I'm not telling everybody just to go out there and quit their jobs either without um, having success in the business. Right. And I want to make that clear because um, I followed my gut and I, and, I, and I also like, you know, like you guys reiterated, I made a decision that I was going to do whatever it took. Um, I, that, that, and that's, that's something that you really have to like have in you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not easy. Right? Like mm -hmm. you, you got to really know that you're going to do whatever it takes because yeah. it can get real. <laughs> yep. Yep. So you were wholesaling when your friend introduced you to Airbnb. No. So yeah, whole, Airbnb wasn't even in the picture yet. So boom, wholesaling finally did my first deal at the end of, it was like September, October ish. Finally. Um, for like $5,500, um, wasn't much, but let me tell you something that $5,500 was probably one of the most fulfilling moments in my entrepreneurial career. Um, because that's when I actually like did that on my own, that like one clip, 5,500 flipped the deal. Right. Didn't have to have any money. Crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and that gave me confidence. It's the small wins, right? It's the small wins. Some, you need those small wins to give you confidence to do the bigger ones. So from there, I was like, I right, put, I put a lot of it into marketing. I was just pushing marketing, more deals, marketing, more deals. And then I started creating, 
I got to the point, my, my wholesaling business, you know, bring, bring about six figures on an annual basis, right? Awesome. Um, but then what happened was a, a good friend of mine introduced me to network marketing. And mind you, I wasn't necessarily like really looking for a network marketing business. I didn't really understand it too much. I, I had heard about all these different just, <laughs> just notions of network marketing, but mm-hmm. it had to do with travel and, and it had to do with travel. So for me, I love to travel. So I was like, you know, what the hell? Um, I ended up really liking the company and to the point where I, I ended up building it for like six, seven years. And I built an organization of like 800 plus people um and not just the united states but even like other countries as well right had a lot of fun with it was able to travel a lot of different places what happened was after building that that company and having a successful organization having such a solid residual income the company started having challenges Hmm. challenges much you know outside myself and mind you i actually put wholesaling to the side to go all in in network marketing. Um, and it got to a point because of the challenges, my income was in jeopardy. And I was like, man, I got so excited and I got so used to traveling the world and making passive income that I didn't want to change that. So I had a good friend of mine that was in the Airbnb business without owning any property. And, and she had, I want to say at the time, she only, yeah, she, she only had like one property, but I saw, you know, I saw what she was doing and she ended up getting like a second one. And when I think she got her second one, I was like, you know, damn, I need to find me another stream <laughs> because my stream can potentially dry up outside of my control. Um, so that's when I really started looking into this whole Airbnb thing and I, I was just a student, you know, because it was a new business for me, but it was like, I had to, I had to get back in student mode now, you know? So that's how I got introduced to the Airbnb thing. Dope, dope. That's awesome. So, okay. We, we, we love that, but we've got, we've got to inter- interrupt for a commercial break. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, and you are listening for the first time, welcome, welcome. We also want to introduce you to the Melanin Millionaires Club. This is our community group where we talk about all things entrepreneurship, wealth building, um, et cetera. And this is a good, uh, spot to plug that Kimoy will be doing a free class for us in the community. So you can look forward to that, uh, during black history month. We're super, super excited for that. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, we, we talk, you know, we talk heavily about being in the room, right? And so the Melanin Millionaires Club is a great opportunity to tap in. We have weekly class. We have a class every single week, sometimes multiple classes a week. We have tools, downloads, guides, resources, um, investment calculators, spreadsheet. I mean, we have it all. I think Carter, we, we, we've twisted his arm to, to drop everything in there that he's created. Um, so just being in that sure. room. It's phenomenal. And one of the, the most underrated features of the platform, X Penny, also known as my pocket advisor. So, you know, working with a financial advisor can cost you thousands of dollars a year. But with, with, with my pocket advisor, all you have to do is send a DM um, uh, to X Penny on the platform and she will answer your questions in a relatively timely fashion, right? Now, again, it's a real human behind it. So I say relatively timely might be 24 hours, might be 48 hours, but it's going to be a real answer from a real person in real time. So if you need to get in a room with like-minded people to learn more about personal finance, wealth building, entrepreneurship, hop into the Melanin Millionaires Club. You can find the link in the show notes. And we actually have running a special. You can get in the room for just a dollar trial. See you inside the club. All right. So now you got a friend, right? She, she She's doing her thing, got a couple of properties, you know, network marketing, was at risk and you realize that your stream could potentially dry up. And I think that's an important distinction that a lot of people are, are kind of afraid to say out loud. Like I did network marketing a little bit, like back in the day, like right out of college, I actually made some really good money. I paid for my Miami trips, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so I have nothing bad to say about network marketing. Um, but to your point, it's not, it's not quite yours, right? It's like you can build it up, right? And you can build up a really significant stream. I know some people killing it in network marketing, but if there are some organizational challenges beyond your control, that could affect your income. So you had that aha moment yep. and then ultimately you're like, okay, I got to do something different. And so is that Google's got, that kind of the official inflection point to transition into Airbnb? 100%. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that, was, that was definitely the catalyst for sure. 
Okay, so tell us a little bit about that experience. Because again, like we see you now, and you got the crazy transitions and you traveling and you out here. But like, tell us about that journey, right? So you got a friend who's doing it, but you're getting into Airbnb. So tell us like, like how did you officially get started in some of the highs, the lows, the learning lessons of just, yeah. just navigating this Airbnb space? Yeah, for sure, man. So now like once I became aware that I need to do something different and once the, the idea of doing Airbnb uh, came to mind because it was like, okay, I can do a lot of different things. I can even go back to wholesaling, right? Um, but Airbnb just made sense. The, mm-hmm. And the, especially the, the opportunity to do it without owning property. Um, cause I know if I just really just kind of got this information, just dialed in, I can, I can get a property in a pretty fast period. So I ended up pretty much looking for my first property, right. And doing it through rental arbitrage. So, you know, for those that don't know what rental arbitrage is, it's the ability to, to be, it's the ability of getting a property that's more so designed for a long-term lease. We lease the property out. Um, with the intention on utilizing for business. And then of course you furnish it and make it look nice and comfortable. Um, mm-hmm. We can list on sites like Airbnb, VRBO and so on and so forth. So at that point I had to really understand, okay, now I got to look for a landlord or a property manager that's in alignment with what it is that I'm looking to do. Right. And I finally found a property and it was just on from there. I had to furnish it, I had to make it look nice. And when I tell you, when I, when I look back at that property, it was so basic um, because I didn't have any idea when it came to like decor or like any, any of that flashy stuff. It was just like, okay, got a property, got to put furniture in. Um, that, was, that was really it. But the interesting was, I actually was that guy. I used, I used to clean my own Airbnbs, mm. right? Like I, I used to literally clean my own Airbnbs because I didn't really know any better. Plus I was being cheap. <laughs> right. Um, and because I just kind of thought, like, why pay somebody else so I can just keep the money for myself and clean my own properties? And that's kind of how I rolled, right? I was, and I was just really trying to learn, figure this whole thing out just from the ins and outs. And I remember I got to a point where I wanted to get another property. But in the back of my mind, I was like, yo, if I get another property, I got to clean more. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the funny thing was, I actually got, I got another property and I was, cl- and I was the one cleaning them. And it just, it was one Sunday where I wanted to go to church and I was trying to hurry up and clean because I think like all the properties need to be clean on that one particular Sunday for the next guest. And there was a check-in for that, for that, for both properties. And I had to miss church because I had to clean. And it was at that point where I was like, nah, yo, I just literally created a job for myself. This is crazy. <laughs> This is crazy. And I was like, yo, there's no way I can keep cleaning these properties. And like, it was mad random. Like, I want to say a couple of days later, I had to go to a funeral and one of my, one of my frat brothers were there. And I was like, yo, I need to find a cleaner. And he was like, well, you know, such, such got a cleaning company. I was like, yeah, she do. And I called her and then like, literally like later on that night, she came to my house and we were talking about like cleaning and then like she ended up being my cleaner. And I was like the, probably the first person I ever hired in my Airbnb business. And I was like, damn, I wonder what it's like to not clean my property. So she was cleaning my property. I was like, yo, this is mad cool. <laughs> this is mad. This that is, was this cool. Is mad. Yo, this is cool. Like I'm not cleaning properties and like I'm making money. I was like, yo, this is cool. So then I got another property and I was like, it, at that point, I realized I, I, I really because it's like in, in wholesale real estate. I didn't because I, I, again, when it comes to wholesaling, you can actually build a team and you can have like other people like you know doing calls and like when it comes to mm-hmm. marketing, you can actually have partners stuff like that. But I was a solopreneur when it came to wholesaling. Even with network marketing, the cool thing is about network marketing, you don't have to like um, have the responsibilities of like a traditional business, you know. But it's right. like. You can make money, but it's like you don't you don't like necessarily like hire people. <laughs> so when it came to this Airbnb thing, I was doing it, I was acting as a solopreneur again, but I could not grow being a solopreneur. I actually had to like delegate and hire other people if I was gonna grow. So when I had that cleaner, it kind of gave me the first taste of like delegation. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, man, from there it was just like I, I just kept on adding more properties to the portfolio. Um, you know, got a cleaner, got a handyman. So it was just like I, I got I got more and more hands off as I grew more and more, you know. And right. then what made it made even more sweeter, I ended up hiring hiring people to like talk to all my guests. And I don't even I don't talk to guests anymore. 
Um, and just every aspect of my business, man, I just, I got it all delegated. I got outsourced it all. Right. You know? Right. Nice. Okay. So, so let me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, bro. Cause it, you, you, you gave a lot of game in there. I think it might've went over people's heads. So um, one of the things that you said earlier is that you found renters in line with you being doing Airbnb. Some people just go behind their back and just go and rent, get apartments and sneak and do Airbnbs and stuff like that. Yep. And you, you also mentioned that you, you know, hired a cleaning company. So I guess my question to you is, what are some key do's and don'ts for like starting your first Airbnb property? I'm, I know one of the things like don't get a property behind somebody's back because you have to, you know. So what are some good do's and don'ts that you learned that you wish you told your younger self at this point? Yeah, well, number one, because even in, in the midst of all that, um, I, I attempted to get some properties without getting consent as well because I didn't know any better. Um, and I did get some of those properties. I ended up getting kicked out of a couple of properties. And so from there, it was like, okay, I should only do, I should only pick up properties and add to my portfolio if the landlord or property manager is actually in agreement with my business model, right? Like that's, that is definitely number one. If you want to have a stress-free business, if, if you want to have a long-term business, because it's like, if, if you want to have a business, because I feel like if you're doing it without permission, it's not even a business. You're, you're, uh. you're hiding <laughs> you're, just, you're, you're, you're hoping you don't get caught so that's number one um and then the interesting thing is with that cleaner as well um still a good friend of mine um but what i realized is when it comes to hiring family and friends you got to be very mindful right and also she was she was she got she was so used to just clean, cleaning there's there's a team being a cleaner and doing traditional cleaning and actually cleaning airbnbs and short-term rentals there's a difference and what I realized was she was, she had this just regular cleaning mindset, but the whole short-term rental thing was like throwing her off. And it just got to the point where we had to part ways. And from there, I had to find actual cleaners that focused more so on Airbnbs and short-term rentals, because that is a thing. That is a thing where you can actually focus and find cleaners that specialize in cleaning Airbnb. You, that's a lot more advantageous because they, they understand the assignment. You want cleaners that understand the assignment. They're just not just cleaners, right? Because they'll overlook things and, and they don't understand the system. Um, and then also, I would you don't want to clean yourself because uh, there, there are people that are going to get caught up in the trap that I got into and that's cleaning, cleaning properties themselves, right? Because again, mm -hmm. um, true business owners, they work on their business, not in their business, right? So right. Don't, don't do things out of being cheap <laughs> or just because you feel like you can't trust people. A lot of times people do that. They feel like they don't trust, they can't trust other people to, to, to fulfill a role in their in their business or the company. So they feel like they should do it themselves. Hey, yeah. that happened to you one time, right, George? What? I, re I remember you came to Atlanta and your Airbnb wasn't up to par. Oh yeah, it was. It <laughs> you was, were cleaning toilets, bro? No, no, no. It was the Airbnb that I went to. Oh, it was okay. It was my Airbnb. Okay. Yeah, it was all the way not up to par. I uh, it was wild. Like, I mean, they had like yeah. sex toys like underneath the. It was it was crazy. Like to the point where, like, we had I had felt falling asleep, but then my my wife like woke up in the middle of the night. I don't know if she had saw something. Like it was like two in the morning. She's like, "Yo, we out. Like, we got to find a hotel. I'm out. Like, I can't sleep here. I'm delirious. I'm like, wait, what's going on? What? Wait a minute." And she's like, nah, we gotta, we gotta go. Like, and so it was like 2 30 in the morning. We called the hotels and literally left that night. And then they were just like, like, we'll we'll we won't charge y'all as long as y'all don't leave a bad review or something. So it was, yeah, it was bad because he didn't have a good system in place. It was some guy that thought that you know things were going the way it was supposed to be going, and it wasn't it wasn't going like it was supposed to be going. Somebody had smoked in the Airbnb, there was sex toy, it was it was nuts. So the yeah. cleaners did not understand the assignment. Assignment. <laughs> they did not understand the assignment. I remember exactly. that. That was so funny. We were supposed to <laughs> podcast record, and I was like, "What's up, G?" He was like, "I'm tired. I didn't sleep well. What happened? It was sex toys everywhere." Wait, it, what? 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 <laughs> what type of yeah. night you have, bro? Yeah, crazy, crazy. <laughs> um, so, so now, make sure the cleaners understand <laughs> the assignment. Okay. Make sure they understand the assignment. So now, I mean, I know we're we're coming up you know, on the tail end of the podcast here. And for, for people who want the really, really tactical Airbnb game, they're gonna have to hop into class because we really got in to dive deep in your story, which we love. But one thing I do want to ask, because, you know, those who, who don't know you yet, obviously they'll know you now and they can follow you and tap in. 
but you're now on the other side of it. You're experiencing a lot of success. You have some ancillary business models. You're teaching people how to do what you learn how to do. And as your success is expanding, my question for you is really around uh, like, like the financial part, right? Because like, as you continue to make more money, as you continue to grow, what would you tell an entrepreneur who's like on the come up, right? Who's starting to get those wins, starting to make more money than they've ever made. How have you reframed your money mindset um, now that you are, you know, becoming really financially successful as an entrepreneur? Yeah, man. I mean, what I would say is, you know, number one, like that sign behind you, you know, never stop dreaming, you know, be, be very careful. Um, one of the biggest just obstacles for, for people that reach higher levels of success is, is getting success, right? Like one of the biggest things that hold people back from great is experiencing good, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's, 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 it's making sure that you constantly put yourself in the right environments around the right people that continually compel you to move forward, to never feel like you've made it. To understand that this is a marathon, not a sprint. Like for me, it doesn't matter what I've done up to this point. I feel like I haven't done anything yet. You know, it's like what Kobe, it's like what Kobe said, right? Like I think it was like the playoffs, and like Kobe had a big win, right? Mm-hmm. And I think like the it was the finals, was like, you know, it was the finals, yeah. Yeah, it was the finals. Okay, yeah, yeah it, it wasn't like a, one of the finals games. Yet. So like the interview was just like, you know, Kobe, like you just won a big game. Like, why aren't you excited? Like he was just like, well, is the job done? Like what do you say is a job yeah. not done? Yeah. <laughs> job not done, right? So it's like, yo, mm-hmm. like the job's not done. You know, like I'm here building a legacy. I'm here building something big. So I feel like. And also, I think you got you to gotta do something that's bigger than you, right? So, like, for me, this is bigger than me. I don't have any kids yet, but eventually I want to have kids. So, like, I want to make sure my kids' kids is good. So, it's to always focus at a bigger picture. And guess what? If you feel like you've achieved it, create a bigger picture. And, um, you know, never stop driven, dreaming and never stop just pushing. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. If you had to leave us with one quote, like one thing that just really sticks out to you, that really resonates with you when you think about the, the life that you're designing and what you stand for? What's, what's, what's something you could leave with us as a final thought? Man, do today what others won't so you can live tomorrow like others can. Mm. You know, the, the reality is most people are not going to do what it takes. Most people aren't going to live like their dreams. Most people are going to give up. Don't be most people. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, man, we appreciate you for coming on the show telling us a little bit more about your story, your journey. We're super excited to get you inside of the Melanin Millionaires Club to drop some straight Airbnb and short-term rental game because we know they got a little sample. You know, they got a little sample of it on the podcast, but we know you got a lot more game to give them so that people can create a new stream for themselves in, in 2022, man. We know if anybody can help them, show them the way, we know it's you, man. So we're grateful. We appreciate you for tapping in. And y'all, if y'all love this episode, make sure you go blow up his Instagram, Follow him, leave a comment, let him know what you thought about his story. And more importantly, make sure you sign up for the class. It's going to be absolutely free to the public. I want as many people in there as possible. You know, we do no less than, you know, thousand plus RCPs. So we need y'all in the room live, right? No replays. We want y'all live. We need that energy. So appreciate y'all for tapping into the episode until next time. Peace. Thanks for having me, guys.